So bands weren't always around in training. I remember in the early 2000s them coming out. Dick Hartzell um, used to br bring them down from Cleveland, Akron area. And we used to have big boxes of bands and not know what to do with them. Now it seems like there's more of a science to them. And today we're going to show you how to set these things up and a little bit of the science and history behind the bands. So the year was 1999 to 2001. We're over at Louis Simmons Westside Barbell Gym. Dick Hartzell brings this massive box of bands in. We have no idea what to do with them. We don't know how to set them up. We don't really know what they're for. And he gave them to us and said, here, play around with these and see what you find out. Well, Chuck Vogelpool and George Halbert started to play with these things and create an actual science behind how these bands were being used. Now, for most of us, the normal mini band, which are gonna come in red depending on the the brand, I strongly recommend getting a quality brand like Elite FTS has. These brands of bands come in different colors, but the mini band is usually what's used for most speed work for most people. These thicker bands like blues and silvers can be okay for squatting, but are mostly used for advanced style lifters, i.e. over five, six, 700 pound squatters. So these bands are good for stretching and other things, but for the bench press today, which is more easily explained, the red band is going to give you about everything that you need, especially in the speed realm. If you have any questions on speed work, we have shot some videos on speed work. I strongly suggest you go and watch those so you get an idea of what we're talking about if you're saying, what is he talking about with speed work and things like that. But bands are elastic pressure instead of gravitational pressure. So weights fall at 9.81 meters per second, and that's our, what that is kind of why they weigh that. 45 pounds falls at 9.81 meters per second, right? Heavy. Bands can be used in outer space because they don't need gravity, they're elastic. So the big thing that I think people don't understand about bands is that bands increase acceleration. So if you hook a band onto something, it's gonna pull it down much, much faster than actual gravity would throw it. So when I attach a band onto a barbell, it's gonna turn that barbell into a rocket ship on the eccentric phase, which does a few things. One, it makes my stretch reflex insanely strong and powerful but two, it also creates much more soreness and damage to the actual soft tissue in of itself. So you have to know what you're doing with these bands and you have to know how to set them up correctly. So the first thing we're gonna go over on the bench press is how to set these things up when a bench or a, a setup of some nature already has band attachments involved. Okay, for most people that bench over say 250 pounds, you're gonna use a double red, which means you take it this way, put it under the T handle if it has a setup for that situation. And then you take this to the bar. Now that on both sides is gonna be roughly 100 pounds of band tension and about 50 when you touch, depending on how thick you are. But let's say you can't bench 250, which would be the bare minimum of what you need to have this much band tension. Let's say you only bench 150. You take half the band off and you hook it onto the J-hook. Now, you have 50 pounds of band tension at the top and about 25 at the bottom. This would be optimal for somebody that benches 150, maybe a little more, a little less for speed work. Um, but the band tension actually increases the acceleration of the bar. So that's what you have to be careful with with bands. So they add pounds, but they also add an accelerative property, which makes them very powerful to increasing speed and 1RM maxes. So a double red band is about all you're gonna ever need for speed work. And that's how you properly set it up with a T-handle. Now I'm gonna show you how to set it up if you don't have this fancy style bench. Now, if you don't have this fancy style bench, what you do is you take a 45 pound plate, you take one end of the band around the plate, come through the hole. Once it starts to get a little tension on it, separate it a little, and then pull this through the middle as such. This is how I had to do it in college, because we didn't have the right shit to set up the bands. Voila. Band set up for people with no money. 
So you take a 45, drape the band, put it through the center. Now you have a decent amount of band tension. Is it as much as a doubled over band through the T-handle? No. But this worked for me all the way up past a 500 pound bench press. So now you know how to set up bands with T-handles and set up bands with actual plates. Now, the other ways that you can set stuff up and you see people all the time doing it is when you have it this way. Through the center of the bench and then over to the bar. Now this way is okay, but the problem is if you're a thicker guy, it's gonna get in the way and nobody really knows what the tension is on that because these bands have been measured in the way I've shown you set up. So I do not recommend doing it this way. Everybody has 45 pound plates, set it up linear. The other major factor I see people messing up with bands is where to set the bands in relationship to where you actually do the lift. So as you can see, there's a pretty good angle on this, this band coming through these plates. The reason is, is because I'm gonna bench out here. So look, now it's vertical. So when you train bands, you have to be very cautious of understanding that the band needs to be vertical where you lift, not vertical in the rack and not vertical two feet, five feet away, vertical right where you're going to do the lift. And that is important for not only the bench, which we're going over today, but squatting and everything else. So make sure that when you take the bar out and you're ready to go downward or start the eccentric portion of the motion, that the band is vertical at that point, not angular. An angular band is not gonna act correctly and not be very conducive to creating an environment that's going to help you. So make sure that the band is straight up and down when you're doing your actual lift, not in the rack. I use the Alternum and BCAAs when I'm training, both pre and during training, to make sure that my energy level stays super high while I'm getting fatigued or while I'm in a calorie deficit. So you've seen how to set up bands correctly. We showed you how in the bench press because I think it's one of the easier ones to teach. Make sure the bands are vertical and not angular. Make sure you have them set up correctly. But also remember that bands are not only just how much more do they add. It's all about adding more kinetic energy and adding actually tension. You know, bands like to throw things at you. They like to make your tendons and ligaments work way harder. And you'd be able to feel that if you get super strong. But what I'm gonna show you is in a previous video, we showed 30 to 40% of weight is what it's on the bar. And then people go, well, how much accommodating resistance? Well, I just added 100 pounds of band tension and you're gonna see that this 185 is not gonna slow down. So did it get heavier or did I learn to retrieve kinetic energy better and learn how to use 185 kind of against itself? This is how I think I was able to build that massive bench press. As you can see, based off the of stock 185, it's not any slower than when I add 100 pounds of band tension. Now that is power.